Hello, good evening viewers. This is attorney Nuraj Gehi and welcome to Green Card with Gehi. And uh, some important news from the world of immigration. Uh, the president is trying to make asylum very, very difficult. So in a sense, uh, judges are going to be having the power very soon uh, to just throw the case out if they think that a particular application does not have any merit, which means that Let's take an example when someone is coming over here and, uh, you know, they're applying for asylum. Uh, now the system is that, you know, you get a hearing before an immigration officer, then it goes to the judge and you get a fair hearing. But uh, what Trump is trying to do is he's trying to cut the process short. Wherein exactly the judge is going to decide there at that moment whether this person has a meritorious application or no. And if it's thrown out, you're looking at trouble. So the message is that if you are trying to apply for your asylum, I would request you to apply as soon as possible before the law changes, because things are really, really getting difficult in the world of immigration. So that's some very important news that's coming out. And uh, let's see what happens and when this particular part of the law becomes you know, a reality. So the message is that if you want to apply for asylum, start thinking about it immediately. Do not wait for, for the last minute especially because you, will, you may not be eligible to apply for asylum in the future. Uh, that's the big news that's coming out from the Trump administration. And the second news is about, uh, you know, until the situation improves, they're planning on having H-1B visa holders outside the country for 180 days, which I don't think is the right strategy at the moment. But uh, luckily the law is not yet implemented and the rules have not yet been implemented. But uh, at the end of the day, this is what we are looking at for the future. Now, in terms of questions and answers, we'll be taking questions and answers at 6.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we request our viewers to kind of uh, wait, and there'll be a time where we'll be taking some questions from our viewers. So today's topic, welcome to Green Card with Kehi. And uh, this is a live show. We will be taking, you know, uh, basically a, a lot of questions. So you can either basically uh, you know, chat, send your questions on the chat message, or you can talk to us live, wherein we can kind of, you know, interact with all of us. So the very yes, we will be having a question and answer at 6.45 p.m. That's the time you all can ask us your questions. So L1 visas, we are going to talk about L1A first briefly. We spoke last week, and thank you so much for the overwhelming response we received from all over the world. So L1A is meant for managers, if you want to start a branch office in America, consider the L1A. If your company is doing very well, has 40, 50 employees, and you are that enterprising, dynamic entrepreneur who wants to basically start an office, consider the L1A visa as a manager, start your operations and start your branch office and do very well in America. And the good thing is that through that, you can also secure your green card. So that's about the L1A manager category which means who are, who are the people who consider the most IT companies, export companies, government exporters, uh, big business people who want to basically establish the, op the operations here, they contact us. We get calls from CEOs of companies, uh, the upper management, uh, they email us and they tell us, okay, Mr. Gay, I'm coming from Dubai, I'm coming from so-and-so country, and if we could be ready with the procedures, we can get things going. So what we do in L1A and L L1B visa cases, is that we do the groundwork for the client, make sure we are ready so that we don't waste time and we get the company going. Mm -hmm. That's about L1A visas. Mm -hmm. Now, what is L1B? L1B is a person of specialized knowledge. So now this is a person who's working for the company abroad and he wants to come here and he's going to work for the company in a very specialized department over here. And he wants to make sure that, uh, you know, he trains people and, you know, and he's a specialist who can make the company grow in the United States. Easy way to explain it is that exactly, you know, you own a software consulting company and uh, in the US as well as abroad. Now you have this very special guy who's excellent in SAP uh, systems, applications and procedures. And he's also very good in Java. So he comes up with an idea that we can have a marriage between Java and between SAP, which is a rare find. So you're looking at this genius this person who has specialized knowledge, and this is a person who has special, unique, and extraordinary knowledge about your company's practice and procedures. And when they have those uh, great kind of uh, practice and procedures, 
and they know about the company's product, that's really, really going to help you a lot. So we're getting some questions already. So if there's a question, you, you raise your hand, please feel free. I mean, if you have any questions, please ask us. All right, so I'll continue as the questions go on, we're going to talk. So please ask your questions also and join the participants tag over you so I can answer your questions. So if you raise your hand, just ask your question. That's the easy way to do it. Now that's rule number one. Now rule number two is that when you're coming on an L1B visa, for example, you can also be a chef or you can be an engineer with amazing skills, someone who can be a great interior designer, who's very has very specialized knowledge. It can be anybody whose skills are special, unique and extraordinary. You're, and, but the person has to be like a very high up in the, in the company, you cannot have basically, you know, a low, a low ranking individual who doesn't know much about the company's practices and procedures to come into the United States. So now let's take an example about a chef. So you have a chef working in Italy right now, and you have a, you have a branch of that uh, restaurant here in the US. Now this particular chef is very good and basically, you know, making some very specialized pizzas um, which are not found anywhere. So now this person wants to come to America and he wants to train the chefs in Manhattan or anywhere in the country on how these specialized pizzas are made. So then that particular chef can come in on an L1B because he knows that what kind of dough is needed and how much time basically you're going to basically, you know, kind of put in the dough, you're going to mix up the sauces and then all. So that involves a speciality. So that person can come in as a specialist. So because he has that specialized knowledge, then a, a, a chef wants to come and work for a Thai franchise over here. And he's very high up in the company there. You can consider the L1B for that. So the industry does not matter, but it's the knowledge of the person that matters in that specialized field. That person can specialize in anything. People think that exactly it has to be in IT. The answer is no. So if you can also be in the medical profession, uh, you can be in any other profession, but then you know exactly what you want. So, you know, what you can do for the company. So we took some fine examples about how you can actually come in under the L1B. Some other important things for the L1B visa category, which are critically important, is that uh, the good news is that uh, you can be in the L1 category in America for a period of five years. And you can also get your spouse, you can get your children to the United States. So that's a big blessing. So they can be with you. And your spouse may also be allowed to work after she gets employment authorization. Now, people ask me that what can I do is if I want to get a green card. So if you come in under the L1B visa category, the thing is that, you know, you'll have to go through the labor certification process. And most companies are happy to do that. And the good news is that if you're not from India, if you're not from China, but there's a major backlog, it's not a big deal for the company to get your labor certification done. And after that, they can actually apply for your green card. So these are things that I want you all to know that you know there is light at the end of the tunnel and you can actually kind of apply and you can take it from there for sure. So these are some issues about L1 B visas and uh, who should consider it uh, like, uh, you know, mainly like, uh, if you're a person of specialized knowledge, you're a chef and you own these seven restaurants uh, in your home country, you can come in, in on an L1B too. But the better option, if you already have a presence in the US, but if you're a chef abroad, and if you want to start your first restaurant in America, come in as a manager, because you can manage the operations, you can also cook, you can do a lot. So therefore it's very important to, you know, uh, to look, look at every case from a legal standpoint, whether the L1A would be a better option whether an L1B would be a better option. So it all depends on the knowledge of the person or depends upon the years of experience. And you need to look at the resume of the candidate very well when you are looking at you know, these kinds of visas. And uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, it has a multiple entry. If you get it abroad, you can travel, you can come back, or you, know, you can travel between the countries. So the question I get is that Mr. Gehi, I got my L1B. Now, can I change my employee to an H-1B? The answer is yes. If you get another company who's ready to actually kind of sponsor you for an H-1B, they can do that too. 
provided you have uh, attained a bachelor's degree, you have, you know, in accordance with US laws, they can also change the status as an Avratan. Now, some people have the big problem when they come on L1Bs. There are some companies that have a bond requirement and all that in a foreign country. So we've handled such cases, we've helped people, and uh, you know, some of them were able to come out of the bond. And we were able to work with uh, the employee who said that I'm ready to work with the, uh, the current employer and come out of that situation. So you have to look at everything what the person wants, whether he has another job offer. These are some of the most critical requirements of the L1 B visa category. So to make a long story short, if you are intending to establish a branch office in the United States, we can help you under the L1A or the L1B category. Uh, the good thing about the L1A, just bringing up the different visa category, the L1A category is that uh, you do not need a labor certification. This is a big difference between the L1A and the L1B. So L1A, after one year, your company did well. You have 25 people, well and great. You're a brilliant man. Think about the green card. Apply for the I-140, get it approved, and you're straight out there. So those are some factors for people to consider under the you know, L1A visa category. That's critically important. And then you know, you also you can apply for a spouse as a dependent and kids who are under the age of 21 can also qualify for a green card. So there are some questions. I'm going to start taking some questions and if people have anything to say and if there are any participants, I would request you to ask questions uh, live. So I have uh, Salim Shahid over here. Salim, can I have your question, please? Yes, I'm here. Yes, Salim, where are you calling from? I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Yes. And I you... visited your office while I was in the USA in 2012. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, at that time, I was got married with Mashrufa Khanum. Uh, he was... Uh, 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 he was uh, uh, sister, uh, he's a, a, a daughter-in-law of Khandakar Mustaq Ahmed, ex-president of Bangladesh uh, during uh, 1975, after the assassination of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Anyway, then I got married with her in Dhaka, Bangladesh in 2018 with Dr. Farzana Tania and got a baby child. Uh, okay, hold Sabin. on. Is, is your wife an American citizen? Or a green card holder? She was uh, she was American uh, green card holder, but she was charged criminally uh, before the marriage with uh, 1990 k USD, and after that she also okay. Let me finish. Charged... Are you okay? So did you ever get the green card or no? Uh, no, I did not even apply it for. Okay, uh, just let I, me finish. I, I... Hold on. And do you have a baby from her? Uh, yes. Okay. Very good. And uh, are you still together or did she divorce you? Uh, we are mutually uh, separated. Uh, okay, so you're not divorced, right? Uh, yes, I'm divorced uh, with her because... When did you divorce our her? Marriage, uh, our marriage has not been registered yet at Town Hall of uh, Loma Linda, California. So okay, where do you live right our, now? Our parents decided to get a uh, divorce and as the man okay, just really answer my question have you been divorced yes i am divorced all right so do me a favor send me an email at info@gayilaw.com so we can talk a little further about your case info@gayilaw.com info at of gay gay send me an email yeah, sure. and let me move so you'll yeah, be able okay. to send it better it's right here info@gayilaw.com yeah. it's right in front right of you. Down, yeah uh, okay and right now, my wife is is a uh, uh, is a uh, uh, like a director of a top ten garments uh, here in Dhaka, Bangladesh, Usman mm -hmm. Industries, and he's she's also a doctor, Doctor Farzana Tania, and my baby is six months old. Yeah, this is the second wife. Right? Do you have a chance to come to America? So this is what we can do. If you could email me, then we can discuss another way for you to come to America. You can apply for the e visa category yeah. through which you can invest in America and we can consider that. Okay? Okay, sure. Thank Email you me as soon as possible, then we'll have a Zoom meeting, my brother. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So, Bye. folks, if there are any more questions, please ask us. We're seeing a lot of people who have questions. 
and you can spread the message like how this gentleman asked me a question. You all can start asking me now. You have Eleanor London, who has a question. Eleanor, may I have your question, please? Eleanor, please unmute. Hello? Hey. Good evening. Oops, can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Yes, sorry. a little bit, please. I have a yes. question. Oh, sorry. I have a question. I have 40 credits as a U.S. born citizen, a U.S. born American. That if I take and marry my. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. I'll take and I think you have a problem with your microphone. Oh, let me see. Oh, I turned it up. Oh, can you hear now? Is yeah, I can right? hear you now. Oh, oh yes. Um, I already have four minutes as a United States. I think you do, uh, you're breaking up. Uh, America, um, ten years. Oh, can I send it to you about anybody better? Because I don't want to hope you. Yeah, can you out. email me at info at gaylaw.com and I'll get back to you? Yeah, because uh -huh, it's Thank you nice so much. Just send me an email. Okay. I'll be happy to get back to you with your phone number for sure. Okay. No mm -hmm. So okay. let's take okay. some more questions over here. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a question over here from uh, Salim Shahid that I want a US diplomatic passport for me, my wife, and my baby. You cannot, um, how can you get a US diplomatic passport? Uh, so 10 million, 50,000 million US dollars I need pass. Okay, so the way you can work on these cases is you can send us an email at info at gaylaw.com and you may qualify through the investor's visa through which you can try to settle first with a green card. This is the answer of Salim Shahid. So you can email us and then what you can do is through the investor's category, you should be able to get through or let's have some more discussions as to what's your professional background then we can look further. This is the answer to Salim Shahid, who wants a US diplomatic passport. So what you can first get is a green card in America, then later on you can aim for your US citizen passport. So that's the answer to Salim Shahid. Now, another question here is, okay, we have some other people asking us questions here. So, Okay. Okay, so it's good when we get these questions and answers, either you can chat with us. So that's helping a lot of people to understand. And yes, uh, you know, there are people like, you know, from Dubai and other countries, and they want to come to America and they can come in under the investors visa program uh, because that's $900,000 now. And uh, it's good for people who actually want their kids to come and study in America and get the green cards without any headaches. That's one way of looking at the green card. Second is you're looking at, uh, you know, I think one of the best ways which I've seen for people from Bangladesh, from Pakistan, uh, and from uh, Canada, the e-visa has been magnificent and people love it. And there's so many people who watch the show and they trade with the United States. Trade means they do business with America. Whenever you think of trade, first thing you need to think about is whether your country is a member of the e-visa treaty trader countries. And if you can either be a treaty trader or a treaty investor, then I mean, you know what, you have a very good chance of coming here and you may not even need the investor's visa, you know, if you don't have that kind of money to go for the investor's visa. So those things are very, very important that we are talking about. So if there's any other questions or people want to raise their hands, we'll take some questions. And uh, that is making the show really lively as you all are seeing that I'm taking your questions. Okay, now I have another question here. See, I love it when you all ask questions here. So ask me questions on the chat forum or actually raise your hand over here and join the participants uh, group, like how two people did, and that's gonna be fantastic. Can someone come to the US using a visitor's visa or a visa waiver while waiting for completion of the L1A petition? Yes, uh, this is how it works. A lot of people come over here on a visitor's visa and we start the company, we finish up the documents, and then they go back, they get the passport stamps, and they come back. So that is a possibility. You can even come here on a visa waiver, but you cannot change your status under the visa waiver. I would uh, That cannot happen under the visa waiver. But if you're on a B2 visa, you can change it to an L1. But 
but I would not run that. It's better for you to, you know, kind of come across very cleanly, very beautifully. Immigration respects that, and your chances of getting approved are much higher. Now, this Saima has a question. So, Saima, if you raised your hand, please join us. Saima, your question, please. Good evening, Saima. Hello? Hello? Saima? Hello? Hello? Saima, can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah, I did. Can you hear me? Yeah, a little bit. Can you speak louder now? Now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so um, I have some question like... Um, Where are you calling from, Saima? I'm calling from uh, Florida. Okay, yes. What's your question, please? Uh, if someone use uh, Medicaid before age uh, 21, is it going to uh, like uh, any effect for adjustment of status? Uh, depends on what you wrote on the Medicaid application, whether you openly disclosed the yeah. fact that, you know, uh, but uh, when, when the issue comes back, uh, we've had issues in the past, but we, we were able to fight that issue out. So, you know, it will come up for sure, but mm -hmm. it depends on how well you fight the issue. Okay. okay. So if you have any further questions, you can email me at okay. info at gaylaw.com. And I would like to know a little more about it, but uh, you know, you can fight this out. Okay, thank so you. So there's nothing for you to worry too much, Emma. Okay. So just email me at mm -hmm. info at .com. Let me know what the situation was, mm -hmm. why Medicaid was used, what was the issue, uh, because- yeah, uh, you know, For can... health insurance. Yeah, so if you could email me, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So folks, yes, nowadays, uh, anyone who has taken public benefits can have issues because uh, the Trump administration is very particular and they're not allowing immigrants to use, uh, you know, health benefits and, you know, because of this new law that, uh, you know, Trump sat in, which is actually kind of being disputed in different courts in the country. So that is very important. And uh, there are more questions. Keep asking us and we'll continue with the show. This is what makes the show beautiful is when people ask questions. And our audience is great. We have respectable people, good people asking good questions. So now two participants have raised their hands. So please join us. Press the participants tab so I can take your questions. Okay. Is there anyone else who has a question, please? Or you can also chat if you don't have a microphone. Just use the chat feature. We'd love to basically answer the question over there. So, you know, all right, we have... Uh... Okay, I'm from India and I need an H-1B visa. This is a question from Irshad Khan. Now, Irshad, if you need an H-1B, the first thing you need to do is you need to look for a sponsor in the United States. Or you can apply for a job, and if some sponsor is willing to hire you, uh, because right now the quota is full, but in April, again, the application process is going to start, then you can actually, if you find a sponsor, then he can petition you for the H-1B visa. And if you're lucky, you'll get uh, you know into the quota. And once we get into the quota, the good news is that if it's granted, then you can come here on an H-1B visa. Okay, so the email address is info at gehilaw.com. I-N-F-O at Gehi Law. So the fastest way to get in touch with us is info at gehilaw.com. And I just typed it over there. So what happens, it's really easy. And we have people from all over the world reaching out to us. So if you get on info, then uh, with some people uh, who are abroad, we've been having Zoom meetings with them, and especially with a lot of corporate uh, people like uh, CEOs of companies and, you know, People who want to establish branch offices, they want to come in on e-visas. They've been in touch with us, you know, through Zoom. And, uh, you know, that's how we work. work. Now, there's another question here. This is and Anderson, uh, and I'm married to a year citizen for four years, and I've been living with her for, for three um, in the process of having the restriction to move for the green card saying that she has met someone else and is refusing to help me. Uh, Anderson, uh, don't worry about this. This is a regular problem that happens. Uh, email me 
And the good news is that if you uh, if you can fight your case very well, if you stand up for your rights, there's a very good possibility you'll still get the green card. So you have a good chance for a green card. Anderson, don't worry about it. Email me and I'll be happy to get in touch with you at info at gaylaw.com. Uh, all right. So these things happen a lot because the law on the point is very clear that when you entered into the marriage, you entered with an intent to live your life. You did not intend to, uh, to circumvent the immigration laws to get a green card. So these questions come up a lot, Anderson. And uh, now there's another question here uh, from, uh, uh, okay, now this is uh, Samir. Okay, Samir, you can apply, uh, you know, uh, for a B1, B2 visa. But the question is that, remember, it's going to be up to the consulate because once you apply for an I-130, uh, then the consulate has the right to deny the visa under 214B of the act, especially because you have demonstrated an immigrant intent. But uh, it's not a black and white rule. But if you come across a good officer, you can still actually, you know, assist you with a B1, B2 visa, especially a B2 visa in your case. So that answers Samir's question. So if there's any more questions, uh, we are taking it from Facebook too, plus we are taking some live calls. So if there's anyone else over here from the participants who has any questions, please do let us know. And uh, we can continue this fantastic show. And uh, also I'm gonna put in type your question. So type your question or we are, we are live now on, now or come on Zoom to ask, ask your question. I'm writing really fast because I'm doing two things at the same time. This is because people have asked me to repeatedly remind them that their question they would like to ask. So if I'm trying to, you know, work with people that, uh, you know, to make sure that they understand that this is a live show. Because some, a lot of people were thinking that the show is actually kind of not live. So now must employers pay L1A workers current prevailing wages? The answer is no. Prevailing wages should be is based upon exactly what your agreement was. So the good news is that L1A does not require a prevailing wage. So you know whatever your agreement is with the employer, that's how it can go by. But H1B requires a prevailing wage. Very good question on the L1A. Next question: My fiance is working illegally. He was injured on his job. His, em his employer filed workman's compensation. Will it affect us being cured? We are married. Uh, I will have to look into the case right away. And, uh, you know, we need to look into this, Eleanor, a little carefully. Uh, you know, uh, send me your number. And I think if you fight it professionally, if you fight it pro properly, then I don't think so that we should have any issues. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are a lot more questions that I'd like to ask you, Eleanor. So send me a number at uh, info at and I'll be happy to kind of call you tomorrow. So these are fantastic questions that are coming up. So if there's any more questions, do let us know. And we can take a few more questions before I leave today. So, uh, you know, on the show, you can ask us any questions uh, relating to immigration. And you can be calling from any state. Uh, you can be calling from any country, as you're seeing that people from different countries are calling on the show. And we try to make it interactive for our viewers to make sure that we work with you. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, no lawyer can win every case. I want to be honest enough to let you know that you can try to fight every case because ultimately, whether you deserve a green card or whether you, have, whether you deserve a visa or no, it's up to the government of the United States. So even if you're working with any other lawyer, please do not blame your lawyer. Take it as a good sport. 
So, you know, you can only do this much because you also have to understand that you're dealing with, uh, you know, uh, the, the administration currently is very restrictive in the immigration practices. Uh, it's not a very immigration friendly time in the United States right now. So, but, uh, you know, get your green cards as soon as possible, especially if you're out of status, we are here to help you. Don't wait until the last minute because things get, are only getting difficult in the world of immigration. So if you're married to an American citizen or someone is applying for a fiance visa, if you want to get your spouse here as soon as possible, email us at info at gaylaw.com and we are handling cases from all over the world. So we can help you to basically, to basically you know, make sure that you, you, know, you, you, you do your best to assist your family in settling in the United States. So this is attorney Norish Gehi, and uh, thank you for watching Green Card with Gehi. Thank you so much for the overwhelming response. I love my audience very much. The only way you can help us is tell people to click on the participants tab and ask us your questions live, or at least send us your messages by chat. And the best way to reach me is to email us at info at gaylaw.com or call us at 718-263-5999. This is attorney Gehi. The instant program constitutes an attorney advertisement under the laws of the state of New York. We handle immigration cases from all over the United States and the world. And uh, prior results do not guarantee future outcome. The information in this program is general in nature and does not apply to any particular set of circumstances unless and until an attorney-client agreement is entered into between the parties. Thank you. Don't forget to watch our segment. You're going to get a very important show coming up on Wednesday. And uh, the topic is going to be coming up soon. And of course, we are going to discuss a little bit about the E1 and the E2 visas, which people have really showed a lot of interest in. And then we are going to talk about the O1A visa. And that is meant for performers, for athletes, for people who are in dramatics. Then we're also going to talk about a little bit about asylums and a little bit about how to get, how to fight your deportation. And it's going to be a great show. Wednesday, don't miss it. You're going to get a show which has a little of everything, including the O1A for actors, for performers, for dancers from all over the world, and for people who are very high up and they want to come in, even if they're in the scientific field, if they're in any country, how can they use the O1 visa to come in if they have extraordinary ability with them? Thank you for watching. This is Attorney Gay. We'll be back again Wednesday. Green card with Gay.